Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're going to be having a little look at my Olea Sylvestris and answering one of my viewers' questions. Let's get started. My Olea Sylvestris, or Wild Olive, was an eBay find. I definitely did some late summer pruning on it in August of 2020, so that's three years ago. But I know that you've also seen it in April 2021. I'm not sure you've seen it since. I have removed some fairly substantial branches and I was actually a bit worried it was going to start looking very one-sided but it seems to have balanced itself out quite nicely hello ladybird what are you doing there it needs a really good tidy up it is covered in cobwebs there's lots of old leaves that have fallen over the heat of the summer so i thought while i do that i would actually um, discuss a question that a viewer posed on I think it was one of my crab apple Tina videos so my viewers question was I've just become interested in bonsai and want to create my own rather than buy I did buy a little one yesterday to look after I'm curious though why yours is in a normal pot rather than one of the shallow bonsai pots which seems to balance the tree aesthetically speaking my reply was that's an absolutely brilliant question I'll answer you now but I also think I'll make it into a video a bonsai pot will definitely give balance to the composition however their main purpose is to slow the trees growth help balance energy distribution and make the tree grow in a way that gives the impression of age shortened nodes textured bark that sort of thing if you want your tree to gain vigor thicken up significantly or heal big wounds then a training pot usually deeper than a traditional bonsai pot so that would be considered a training pot a nursery flower pot or even planting in the open ground is the way to go I do have trees in proper I do have trees in proper bonsai pots but they're ones I've bought from bonsai nurseries and are already on their way to refinement, such as this tree. Most of my trees are very young, so they need lots of energy to put on tons of growth, which will give me way more design options further down the line. I hope that helps, but let's see if I can explain it better in a video. In the meantime, I'm very glad you found my channel and keep watching. Now, it is very hot in here today. It is supposed to get up to 29 degrees very soon. Um, so I'm not gonna hang around too long in the greenhouse here, which is the quietest place for me to film. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is do my pruning, do my tidying, and then actually voice over this video for you, where I can have some nice cohesive thoughts. Because <laughs> I can't put two words together at the moment. <laughs> so why would you opt to leave a tree in a nursery can or plant it into a nursery can? With Crabapple Tina, it was the wrong time of year to be trying to do any root work at all. It was a big garden shrub uh, that had been grown to place out in the garden. I needed to remove an awful lot of the top growth, the canopy, to be able to start to work on it as a bonsai. The best time to do that is when it's got the most root mass possible because that root mass can start the healing process. If you try to put a tree into a shallow bonsai pot too soon, you will slow the growth process right down. I mentioned in my YouTube comment reply that things you're looking to 
get from using a shallow bonsai pot are things like much smaller internode spacing so the distance between the leaf internodes where each leaf is placed along a branch they will n begin to naturally reduce become more compact summer growth will shoot away like you can see on this tree we've got quite tight spacings on everything that's nearest to the trunk but as soon as you get a long shoot reaching away the distance between the leaves gets bigger by keeping a tree in a smaller pot doing root work on it to reduce its root mass you are enabling that tree to remain in that tighter node region you've also got some pretty big wounds that you probably need to heal and the best way to do that when you've removed all the top growth is to keep as much of the root mass as possible so that that is pushing all the carbohydrates, water, sugar, all the good things. It's pumping that up the trunk of the tree and the tree hasn't got any leaf growth or very little leaf growth compared to what it did have. So it puts that energy into building tissue over the wounds instead. If you try to do that too soon in a tree's life, you essentially freeze the tree in time. Um, a tree is always growing, it is always developing, it's incredibly hard to keep a tree small, to keep everything about it small, miniaturised, uh, without incredibly careful management or the tree just dying. Trees need to have enough energy to put on new growth every year. If they don't, they will begin to weaken and eventually they will fade away and die. By trying to refine the root mass too quickly, you reduce the tree's ability to push lots of energy up into the the bit above ground, the, the trunk, the branches, the leaves. And so the amount of bulking up the tree can do is very much restricted. By leaving a tree in a nursery can, you have all that potential from that root mass. It's going to put its energy somewhere if it hasn't already got leaves that it's trying to grow then it will try and put new leaves out or put that energy somewhere else. And something lots of people say is a bonsai is not just a stick in a pot or a sapling that you've dug up from the garden put straight into a bonsai pot. That does not constitute a bonsai. You might take a piece of nursery stock and put that into a bonsai pot. That's not a bonsai. It's probably at best a pre-bonsai. It's something you want to work on, you want to develop. But by putting it straight into a bonsai pot, you are reducing your opportunities to develop that tree into something that looks really miniaturised and amazing. And if you look at videos of established bonsai professionals or you go to their nurseries, you will see trees that are growing either in the ground, in nursery cans or in bonsai training pots at a, a later stage in their development. Yamadori, which is trees that have been collected from nature are always placed in a huge box retaining as much of the soil mass as possible from the original location so that the tree is under as little stress as possible. The reason that you can do huge trunk chops or you know, removing huge amounts of branching on 
a brand new tree that's never been worked like that before is because you have the bulk of the root mass. The tree has the most energy it could possibly have to be able to recover. Another reason that I didn't really move Crabapple Tina very much at all when I was working on her was because you should only really look to do one lot of major work to a tree in one growing year. So if you want to repot and you want to reduce the root system, you can do that. You can do it in the very end of winter, early spring. Perfect. That applies to most trees. Um, there are obviously um, exceptions to that rule, like tropicals, that sort of thing. You could do that work in late winter or spring, and the tree would be fine. However, if you then also went and took a lot of the branches away, a lot of the leaf mass, if it was a um, an evergreen of some description, you are severely weakening that tree. You are taking away all its energy stores from the root system, and you are taking away all the energy stores that it might have possibly hanging on in the canopy. And if you then try and do that the next year, or you know, the year after that, eventually, again, you will start to weaken the tree. You really want to do one focused major activity on the tree per year if it needs it and then think about doing the other one the following year bonsai is not a race it is a marathon there is no point in dashing headlong into doing huge bits of work on a tree when it's just going to have a detrimental effect so you shouldn't ever get a tree from the nursery a shrub, um, something that you want to convert into a bonsai and do all the work on it in one day. That's not good for the tree. I also mentioned the texture of the bark. When the tree is growing more slowly it will start to miniaturise the, the cracks and fissures texture within the bark that it is putting on. Because everything is getting slower and smaller in terms of development, even the bark will begin to look like a very convincing miniaturised tree. Uh, you won't see great plates of, of bark. You'll see smaller, much more refined texture on the bark. Not necessarily completely smooth bark but the texture that is there is in scale with the miniaturization of the tree. When you are trying to increase the vigor of the tree planting it in a big pot or out in open ground will spur the tree to just get growing big again it will start to revert to its normal growth patterns. A bonsai isn't a species of tree. A bonsai can be any sort of tree. It is a technique of growing trees and shrubs to miniaturise them. So that means that if I took this olive and I put it in the open ground, eventually it would grow into a big olive tree. It would take a while, <laughs> but it would revert to its natural habit. Right, it's about half past ten. It is unbearably hot here in the greenhouse, so I'm going to call the video done. Hopefully I've been able to give a slightly fuller answer about why you might use a nursery pot for a bonsai tree rather than putting it straight into a traditional bonsai pot. 
But if you'd like to carry on the conversation, then please do so in the comments down below. Or if you're watching this during the premiere, you can make comments in the live chat and I will be with you in the live chat for that. Right, well, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.